Hi everyone, the objectives for this lab are 1. To learn how to build circuits and 2. To discover the properties of series and parallel circuits. We will return back to these in a bit. Let's go over some background and terminology. Let's go over what a resistor is. A resistor is a passive two-terminal electrical component that reduces current flow and therefore lowers the electric potential of the circuit. There are two types of ways resistors can be put together, series and parallel. Well, let's start off with some series circuits. In series circuits, the sum of the electric potential drops across each resistor is equal to the total electric potential of the circuit. Let's put this into some mathematical format. The total electric potential is equal to the electric potential of resistor 1 plus the electric potential of resistor 2 all the way up to electric potential of resistor sub n. Now let's see how resistance and current is affected. Let's start with Ohm's law. Current is equal to voltage over resistance. Let's substitute current times resistance for voltage. Now, current through each resistor is the same. Therefore, current total is equal to the current sub 1, is equal to the current sub 2, and on and on and on. From this knowledge, the total resistance is equal to the sum of each individual resistor. Take a moment to copy these equations in your notes. Now at this time, pause the video and try this sample question. The answers can be seen on the next slide. Now let's discuss parallel circuits. In parallel circuits, the sum of each individual current is equal to the total current running through the circuit. Well, let's put this into mathematical format. Current total is equal to current 1 plus current 2 and on and on and on. Now let's see how resistance and electric potential is affected. Let's start with Ohm's law. Current is equal to voltage over resistance. Let's substitute voltage over resistance for current. Now, voltage through each resistor is the same. Therefore, voltage total is equal to voltage sub 1, which is equal to voltage sub 2 and on and on and on. From this knowledge, the total resistance is equal to the inverse of the sum of all the inverse of each individual resistance. Take a moment to copy these equations in your notes. Now again, at this time, pause the video and try this sample problem. The answers can be seen on the next slide. Now let's review one more time before we start the lab. In series circuits, 1. Due to the conservation of energy, the total voltage is equal to the sum of the individual resistor's electric potential. 2. Current remains the same through each resistor. However, the potential difference must be taken into consideration when calculating the magnitude of current. And 3. Due to Ohm's law, the net resistance is equal to the sum of each resistance. Let's review parallel circuits. 1. The total current is equal to the sum of each individual current through each resistor. However, the potential difference must be taken into consideration while calculating the magnitude of current. 2. The net voltage is equal to the electric potential through each individual resistor. And 3. Due to Ohm's law, the net resistance is the inverse of the sum of the inverse of each individual resistance. Now let's return back to the objectives of this lab. They are 1. Learn how to build circuits, and 2. Discover the properties of series and parallel circuits. Let's go over the description found in this lab. In this lab, you are going to design two different circuits with two lamps, one where the lamps are in series and one where the lamps are in parallel. All right, now we're at the fun part. Let's go over the materials necessary for this lab. You will need a battery source, two light sources acting as resistors, and a switch. Now let's start to put the circuit together. At this moment we will start building our series circuit. I will pause the video at times to explain what is going on. First we will connect the battery source to the switch. The placement of the clip to the switch does not matter because the switch acts as a connecting wire between two points. Next, we will take an alligator clip from the opposite end of the switch to one end of the light. 
The ends of the light source does not matter because conventional current can travel both ways through the light source. Next we will take an alligator clip and connect the two light sources together. And then we will take an alligator clip and connect the opposite end of the second light source to the opposite end of the battery. And now you can flip the switch, turn off the lights, and see how the lights act. Alright, now we have some questions. Let's start with circuit 1, the series circuit. We have already built the circuit, so step 1 is completed. Now step 2. Pause the video and draw out the circuit you have just created using proper physics symbols. You'll see it in a little bit. This is how the diagram should look. How'd you do? Now question three. What happens if one of the lamps is removed? Well, pause the video and try it out. What happens is that the first light becomes brighter. This is due to the light being unaffected by another potential difference supplied by a resistor, or in this case, the light source. Therefore, the first light source is being affected by 100% of the electric potential from the battery. This happens when the second light source is removed. Now let's make a parallel circuit. This is how the circuit should look when we're done. Let's break this apart. First we take two alligator clips and connect it to one end of the battery. The end of the battery does not matter because conventional current runs the same through each resistor. Then we take each alligator clip end and connect it to one end of the light sources. Then we take two more alligator clips and connect it to the opposite end of the resistors. Then we connect both alligator clips to one alligator clip. This is used as an intermediate between the lamps and the switch. Lastly, we will connect the final end of the battery to the opposite end of the switch. Now we have some questions. Let's answer questions two for parallel circuits. We have already completed step one. Now step two. Pause the video and draw out the circuit you have just created using proper physics symbols. This is how the diagram should look. Question three. If we remove one of the bulbs, the brightness should not change. This is because the electric potential of each light source is the same, and therefore brightness should not change. At this moment, please answer the conclusion and application questions. Thank you for your participation in this online lab. I'll see you next time.